Hey everybody, Broody here from the Home Improvement Channel with another video showing you how to fix things around the house. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install some base trim. Uh, this particular trim happens to be a seven and a quarter wide, I believe, and it simulates a two-piece trim where this was a one by six, or if this was a one by six and this was a piece of base cap, uh, but it's actually only one piece. But not to worry. The steps in this video will cover any type of trim. It doesn't really matter. It, it, it all goes in the same. I'm going to show you how to do some inside corners, some outside corners, and how to splice two pieces of trim together if your wall is too long, and also how to stop the trim in areas that come across like a closet door and there's no trim there or, or the end of a wall or something and you have to stop the trim and there's nothing to continue. I'll show you how to handle a situation like that. All right, if you're new to my channel, please consider clicking that subscribe button below. And also, if this video was helpful for you, like this video. So without further ado, let's dive right in. All right, so I've already got my first piece measured and cut here. Um, if you notice, I cut the uh, back like this on the first piece, and then that way when the next piece comes over, it'll be 45 and lay on top of it, and hopefully we'll have a nice uh, seam right there. But what I've done is, is I want to break this on a, uh, a stud in the wall, because if, if you just nail it till you get to the last stud, wherever that, wherever that is, it's a possibility that later on down the road, even if you nail it down here and go into the bottom where the, this wood down here, this might turn into a, a cowlick or an alfalfa, or however you want to say it, and um, eventually pull away from the wall. So if you break it on a stud right here and, and nail it through, you won't have that problem. And um, also, if you notice the other end, I've left the other end flat against the wall like that. I didn't cut any angle on it and I'll show you uh, why here in just a few minutes. So as you can see, the, um, the end of the board is right there at a stud. So I'm going to use my smaller nail gun to, uh, to kind of pin this to the wall right here. And when you're doing this, make sure you're pushing down to, so there's no big gaps on, you know, where the floor is and just kind of pin it should be. All right, looks like we got something here. Usually where there's a plug at, it's uh, def definitely a good indication of where there's gonna be a stud on one side or the other. All right, so that stud is on the right side of the plug. And just measure the next piece. As you can see, it's 127 and 5 eighths to the long side. Remember that uh, if you're doing it this way. You can also cut these off straight and just butt the pieces together. I've done that before and that works fine. All right, I got the next piece on there. See how this fits like that. Just kind of bring it up there and take your time. Now I did have to take this back out and cut it. It was just slightly long. If that happens, just take it out and cut it again because it's worth it to get this joint looking the best you can. That's pretty close right there. So if we nail this joint, now I know we got wood behind it. That'll hold that together. And just do the same thing with the stud finder on down the uh, board there. And again, on the other end, on the right side, I've got it cut off flat with the wall. And I'll show you how to uh, cope those here in just a second. Okay, so remember the very first piece I put was flat to the wall on the left side. Well, this is the next piece that goes to that. So obviously I can't cut this one flat as well. I have to um, cope this one. So what you do to, uh, to get a proper measurement is you run the tape measure all the way to the wall. Like you're going to measure it for a 45, not to the trim. Like I've got it here. I've got it to the wall and then uh, take your measurements. As you can see, it's like 136 and 7 eighths. So when you cut that on the saw, 
uh, you cut it like a 45, like you would normally 45 two pieces together, and then you cope it. Come on, I'll show you. All right, so I got my measurement here, 136 and 7 8. Uh, normally, I like to make the board vertical like this in the saw, but this saw won't cut down this deep when the board is vertical, so I'm having to do it flat, which I don't like it, but you know, it is the way it is. So let's go ahead and cut that, and then I'll show you how to cope it. Close. All right, so to cope this, what you would do is cut the, the wood where it's cut at a 45, you would cut it along this white line right here, just like so, all the way down and make that kind of silhouette so that this is cut off straight. And then what happens is it'll butt right into the next board. And um, normally on this straightaway part right here, you can cut this with a coping saw if you want to die with it for five years, or you could cut this on your chop saw until you get down to this point and then do the rest with the uh, coping saw. This is what a coping saw looks like. I can't cope with this anymore. Not that kind of coping. That's just what they call it. And just carefully cut that corner out, or these uh, silhouette. Now, if I don't get this perfect, this video isn't about me making this perfect. I'm just showing you how to do it. So before you uh, take this back in the house, you can take a scrap piece and check your work like that. And yeah, it's not that great, but you know, some of them are better than others. That one didn't turn out so good, but it's nothing caulk won't fix. You get the idea. All right, there you go. That's how that's supposed to fit. Like I said, that cut didn't come out the greatest, but caulk will fix it. And here's the other end of it. Um, this one actually came out a little bit better. All right, as you can see here, I've started uh, working on some of my outside angles right here. These are a bit more uh, tricky and tedious than your um, inside corners. But let me show you what I've done here. So as you can see here, this one is already cut, but it's not nailed. I didn't show cutting it. It's just a 45 outside angle right here is all this is. And what I usually do is I will nail these together with the uh, small 18 gauge nailer here, here, and here to hold this angle together while I nail the, uh, the rest of the board. I always do this first because a lot of times if you nail the board, you'll find out that this angle is not gonna fit right. So if you nail this first, get it to, to hold itself together and then nail the board, that does work a lot better. Now, towards the beginning of the video, I said something about ending the trim where there might be a closet door. I got one right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it off to this length right here. I'm gonna maybe hold it back an eighth of an inch from the end of the wall. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut an outside angle here, well, this way. And I'm gonna put a little piece in here so that it kind of returns back to the wall. So this is the right side of the, um, of the board that I was showing you where it's gonna return back. So all I've did is I've made a right side angle and a left side angle. So when these two go together, they fit like that. And uh, you could probably nail this with some pin nails, maybe. Uh, sometimes I'll just put a bead of caulk in there to hold it together. And if you look on the bottom, the bottom needs to be fairly flush right here with uh, with the rest of the board, otherwise it's gonna stick out. Now to make this little piece, all you do, see this is the opposite angle right here. And see this line right here, if you just cut this line off right here, I'm not gonna do it. But if you cut it right down that line, that'll come out the right thickness on your board. That I did this, I cut this off the other side, was already uh, was already cut from another board. So that's, this is the wrong angle, that's why I cut the other side off. 
So this is what I mean about fitting this together before you uh, nail the board on. Just get it as perfect as you can get it. And when you're nailing this, don't nail it so the nail gun is angled that way. Otherwise the nail might just come through this side here and then you'll be mad and have to do it again. So try to angle it flat or in even a little bit. That holds that together real nice and then I can nail the rest of the board in. And here's the other end of this board. I've just got caulk holding this right now. So hopefully that won't move too much. So the best way I've learned to caulk is to uh, cut a angle on the end of the tube right here. And a lot of times when you have a corner like this, you may run into where you might have a larger gap here between the wood and the wall. This is not too bad right here. So you may have to uh, make two or three passes to get that filled up. And you know what works best is just run your finger through there, just like that. Trying not to push it up onto the wall, but angle your finger so that you're pushing it down into the uh, trim instead of up all over the wall. See, I gotta make another pass here. See how I'm angling my finger? You probably can't tell, but I'm angling it down towards the uh, trim. All right, so on these corners here, there's not much uh, to it. You'll have a couple of little gaps maybe like this. Just fill it up with the caulk, like so. Not to put too much. And then just kind of work it back and forth a little bit, getting it in the cracks. Also, when you go to uh, cut these corners, they might not all be 45s. You might have to play with the angle with a couple pieces of scrap wood. I've got some that uh, one of them was like 43 and a half. And then the angle up and down wasn't straight up and down either. So I had to cut it at a little bit of an angle this way. Plus it was 43 and a half. So it just depends on the builder and how perfect it is. You may run into that. Just so you know, they're not all going to be uh, flat laboratory condition. So just wipe the best this, uh, wipe this caulk off the best you can right here. I just wanted to show you an inside corner. Just do the same thing with the caulk. Just caulk it in the corner and then carefully work it into all these grooves right here. And also here at the end of the um, turn where I put the return at. Just caulk in here against the wall. When you go back to do the nail holes, a lot of times I'll use like a spackling. The uh, caulk tends to shrink. So just dab some on your finger and kind of do this. This says it doesn't shrink, but it seems like it does a little bit. That's how I do um, base trim. If you have any questions, please comment below. And thanks for watching.